John Ronald Royal Tolkien, known by millions J.R.R. Tolkien, scholar and storyteller, considered one of the greatest fantasy writers of all time, created an extensive and detailed fantasy world set in a prehistoric era of our own world. His most famous stories, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, were set in an area called Middle-earth in Tolkien's world, which he named Arda. However, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings were only a part of Tolkien's world. Tolkien also created a complex mythology, chronicling the history of Arda and Middle-earth, the creation of the world, the gods, and the heroic history of the First Age of Middle-earth. This mythology is chronicled in the book The Silmarillion, in which he worked on for over 50 years, in one form or another. Tolkien's writings are filled with much history and many languages which Tolkien made himself. Where did he get his influence from? Surely he couldn't have thought of everything himself. This documentary will analyse what influenced Tolkien, from his personal life to the languages and mythology of other peoples and cultures. Tolkien was born in South Africa in 1892, where dangers such as monkeys, snakes and spiders flourished. The young Tolkien had been once by a tarantula. Later, he always insisted he didn't have any especial dislike of spiders, but anarchids of gigantic sizes were to make multiple appearances in his writings. Tolkien was homeschooled by his mother, Mabel Tolkien. It was soon clear he had a way with words from the very beginning. He could read at age four and soon learned to write skillfully. He adored Latin. After his father's death, Tolkien's family moved to the West Midlands in England. Tolkien was enrolled at St. Philip's School, and by 1903 he was whizzing past his classmates. Tolkien received a foundation scholarship to King Edward's School. Tolkien, now halfway through his school, was learning Greek, which captivated him, reading Shakespeare, which he cordially disliked, and was listening to his English professor read Chaucer's Canterbury's Tales in the Original Middle English, which he found immensely enjoyable. By this time, Tolkien was already showing remarkable linguistic gifts. He had mastered Latin and Greek, which was the staple fare of an arts education at that time, and was becoming more than competent in a number of other languages, both modern and ancient, notably Gothic and later Finnish. He was already busy making up his own languages, purely for fun. After graduating from Oxford in 1915 with a degree of English language and literature, Tolkien enlisted in the British Army, but spent most of 1916 and 1917 in hospital, suffering from trench fever. It was during this time he started writing The Book of Lost Tales, which would become the Silmarillion later in his life. As a result of his education, Tolkien had a particular love for Northern myths, myths associated with cultures of Northern Europe, the North myths Icelandic sagas, the Finnish myth cycles, Welsh mythology, influences from these were to be seen throughout his writing. The Lord of the Rings, the Kingdom of Rohan, languages and mythology. The best example of the use for outside influences in Tolkien's world is in the Kingdom of Rohan in the Lord of the Rings. Rohan itself was heavily based on Anglo-Saxon culture, society and language. Many influences from the 11th century Anglo-Saxon poem Beowulf are also to be found within Rohan society in the Lord of the Rings. Modjur said, the Golden Hall of the Rohirrim is Anglo-Saxon for Mead Hall. It was the Mead Hall where Anglo-Saxon rulers resided. Many names found in Beowulf are also found in the Lord of the Rings, and sometimes in more prominent roles. The name of Eomer appears very briefly in Beowulf as the son of Offa. But Eomer is very important in Tolkien's world, as the hero of the Rohirrim and the heir to Theoden's throne. Hama is mentioned in Beowulf too, and appears in Tolkien's world as King Theoden's door warden. The language of the Rohirrim is almost completely represented by Old English in Tolkien's narratives. A number of the words in the Rohan language begins with Eor, which corresponds to the Old English Eor, which means horse. The earliest name for the Rohirrim is Eorhead which in Old English is nation or people. Horse people is a fitting name for the men of Rohan. Eoed in Rohan, a mounted regiment, means cavalry, according to the Old English root. This can be applied to most names of people as well. The name Eomer, Eomed's son, seems to be particularly suitable, as he is the third marshal of the Riddermark, 
instance mare in old english stands for mare and a related word mark means horse or steed his sister's name is eowyn the lights in horses where win means joy or, and pleasure the silmarillion the silmarillion is actually tolkien's first book and also his last its origin precedes even the hobbit and it's a story of the creation of Arda and chronicles the first age of Tolkien's Middle Earth. The Silmarillion is composed of five parts the Anilundale, the Vala Quenta, the Quenta Silmarillion, the Akalabet, and the final part, Over the Rings of Power in the Third Age. The Anunindale and the Vala Quenta describe the creation of the universe by the divine being Lizatar, and the shaping of Arda by the Vala, the godlike beings created by Lizatar. They also give the description of each Vala. The Quinta Silmarillion chronicles the First Age of Middle-earth and tells of the terrible war of the elves against the first Dark Lord, Morgoth. It is the largest section of the Silmarillion, over 20 chapters. Featured within the Quinta Silmarillion are several other stories. Many of these stories were influenced and inspired by Norse and Finnish legends. The Akala Beth is a history of the Second Age of Middle-earth and features around the tale of the downfall of Numenor, which Tolkien himself stated was originally written as his version of the legend of the sinking of the lost city of Atlantis. Of the Rings of Power in the Third Age is the smallest section, an essay dealing with the events described in Tolkien's novel, The Lord of the Rings. Tolkien had several reasons for beginning this cycle of mythological stories. One was his love of language. He began developing a language loosely based on Finnish and realised that his created language was irrelevant unless he could create someone to speak it. Middle Earth, as he stated to his publisher in 1955, fundamentally linguistic in inspiration. Of Luvatar and the Valar, when all was darkness and a great void, according to the Anun Daler, that first book of the Silmarillion, there was an omniscient being who lived alone in the vast emptiness. He was called Luvatar, the One. This was the being that Tolkien conceived of the source of all creation. Through the Alundale, Tolkien tells us how the elemental thoughts of the Luvatar became the race of gods called the Valar, and through the power of the spirits. For this race of gods, Luvatar built a dwelling place in the void called the Timeless Hall. Here the Valar were taught to sing by Luvatar and became a vast heavenly choir. Out of the music of these godlike spirits came a holy vision that was a globe world, whirling in the void. Undale bears many parallels and similarities to the Christian Bible. As Tolkien was a highly devout and outspoken Christian, parallels to the Bible in his work should be expected. Tolkien's creation began with the supreme god Luvatar already in existence and creating the Valar from his thought. This is most comparative to the creation in the Bible. A complete biblical picture of God, his angels, and Lucifer are constructed with the fall of the Vala Melkor to evil during the music of the creation and his attempt to control the music with his great discord. When the music was complete, Melkor was cast out. Also, Luvatar gave great might to two of the Vala, Melkor and Manwe, and they are considered the chieftains. However, when Melkor fell to evil, Manwe became the sole leader of the Vala. This is another direct biblical comparison to Lucifer and Michael the Archangel. Each one of the 15 Valar has different characteristics, traits and roles, and bears similarities to gods from other cultures, including Norse and ancient Greek gods. Tolkien is the Valar of fighting and bears many similar traits to Thor, the Norse god of war. Almos is the lord of water, like Poseidon of ancient Greek mythology. Manwe is the chief Vala and lord of the sky, just like Odin of Norse mythology and mythology. Zeus of Greek. The Children of Hurin Within the Silmarillion is the story of the Children of Hurin. It is a dark tale of betrayal, murder, incest and suicide. The evil Vala Melkor, now the Dark Lord Morgoth, is swept over the land with men and men battling to attain the rising tide of his evil. Turin's father, Hurin, is captured by Morgoth. When Hurin mocks Morgoth in interrogation, Morgoth sets a curse upon his bloodline. The story follows Hurin's son Turin throughout his joyless life, his time leading a band of petty outlaws, his betrayal by Mim and the treacherous war, the accidental slaying of his closest friend Bele, his ancestral relationship with his long lost sister Nyanna, and finally to his fight with Glamrod and Morgoth's dragon. 
This human character Turin in Tolkien's Silmarillion was in part inspired by Kalevo of the Finnish epic Kalevala. Like Kalevo, Turin commits accidental incest with a long lost sister. In both the Silmarillion and the Kalevala, the unfortunate sister casts herself into a raging river on learning of the incest. The cursed brother later kills himself by falling on his own sword. In both tales, the sword speaks and agrees to drink its master's blood. Thus, it is evident across Tolkien's work the influences that shaped it. Tolkien did not simply make up a complex mythology. He was inspired by his love of mythology, Norse, Finnish, Greek, and many Germanic cultures shaped his works. Only Tolkien's study of language, theology, had as great an impact on his scholarly pursuits and his writings. And in many ways, mythology and theology worked hand in hand. In the end, these two great influences would drive Tolkien to create. They are truly the wellspring of his creativity and form the foundation of Middle-earth. Elves, dwarves, wizards, and yes, even hobbits.